hello, look at it. It's all green. It's all look at this. I'm sorry, epilepsy warning. Um, to this video, I had some technical difficulties I had to record it like three times. And bear with me, sometimes it's gonna lag. And sometimes this is going to appear very briefly, and I'll cut the video together so that it's minimal impact. Let's dive in. I'll fix the setup next time. Hold on to your horses because we have a new contender in town. It uses less GPU memory. It has a higher throughput. It has a lower latency and it scales better than transformers. This is RetNet, the new Chad. Compare this to measly old transformer. It's better in every way. And that's what we're going to look at today. Retentive networks. Now, is it actually better in every way? Uh, I guess the answer is, it depends. And we'll see and the jury's yet out and yada, 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 but we'll keep the tension up. So today, we're looking at retention network, a successor to transformer for large language models by Yu Tao Sun, Li Dong, and others of Microsoft Research, and Tsinghua University. So as I said, the claim here in this paper is quite a big one. And um, yeah, they say, they propose retentive network as a foundation architecture for large language models, simultaneously achieving training parallelism, low cost inference and good performance. In that, yeah, let the, the experiments are going to show that retentive networks are sort of superior to transformers in many ways. Now the experiments in this paper are quite extensive. And this is by Microsoft research. So at least I would put some weight on what they claim right here. On the other hand, I also feel we haven't seen the end of this yet. And there might be some trade offs that are not that evident in the paper. So uh, this paper, by the way, we've discussed in our Saturday discord discussions, every Saturday, we have paper discussions, uh, it's evening in Europe time. If you're up for that, come by, uh, give it a try. However, this particular discussion I've missed. So I'm very sorry if I say here something that the group has concluded to be not true. Uh, this is just my reading of the paper. I've missed that one Saturday where we discussed this. So diving in the paper presents this triangle right here. They say RetNet makes the impossible triangle possible. The impossible triangle being this triangle here of low cost inference, training parallelism and strong performance. Low cost inference means I can run inference without having to incur a sort of quadratic explosion of some resource. In this case, it's going to be memory. So if I run inference with a transformer, which you can see is not on that side. So a transformer is on this side of the triangle. A transformer as my sequence length grows, I'm going to need a quadratic amount of memory in order to run inference. Now there are some trade offs I can do. Um, specifically, I can trade it off for time and put that memory on disks and so on. But in some form, I'm always going to pay to run that inference because that transformer has attention from every token to every other token using that soft max on top. And that just inherently makes it expensive. On the other hand, we have training parallelism. Now you can see transformer does have training parallelism, which means that I can train if I have a sequence, I can use that as a training example to not only train one token prediction, but to train essentially every single token in the sequence becomes a training example. That's called training parallelism. And you see most notably recurrent networks over here don't have that. So in a recurrent network, I can only train for one token at a time. And that kind of hinders them at scaling to really big, big, or hinders us to apply lots of compute to them and getting them to strong performance, even though from the triangle here, you can see, at least the assumption is that if we could scale recurrent networks, they would exhibit strong performance. And I believe there is some evidence for that, although that's to me a bit shady. And then the last thing, um, no, we had we had all strong performance is just an experimental thing. So strong performance just means 
experiments show that it's strong. The third side here is the linear transformers. Linear transformers notably have low cost inference because they scale linearly. And we've seen a number of them, long former and so on. They kind of try to break down that attention mechanism to make it scale to really long sequences to not have that quadratic explosion of memory usage. And training parallelism, notably because they are transformers, they'll also be able to train to be trained in parallel. They say RetNet is everything. RetNet is in the middle here and um, it achieves all three things. Now, note that in my opinion, RetNet is sort of in this category of linear transformers. So I would denote it something like this. Okay, RetNet being in this category of linear transform. Now, you can also say it's in the category of recurrent networks. Uh, but note that the strong performance that's purely from an experimental standpoint, that's purely saying them running experiments and saying, well, this is actually really good. And it's not the same as low cost inference and training parallelism. These are architectural features that, you know, it's you can you can sort of just see by looking at the architecture. So they built something that has low cost inference training parallelism, but they also claim, well, we have strong performance. So how do they achieve this? Um, they achieve this by essentially going the route of RWKV and building something that is both a sort of a transformer ish model, and also a recurrent model. So they down here, they explain what they do. Maybe first, let's just explore this. In essence, what this model does, what RetNet does is it makes everything into a linear computation. And by being linear, they can be both parallel and recurrent at the same time. So let's demonstrate something like this. Why can a recurrent network not be trained in parallel? So if I have a recurrent network, I don't know, I saw a cat, right? I have this sentence, I put it into a recurrent ne neural network, I have to process each token into a hidden state, propagate that hidden state, process this token, propagate that hidden state, and so on. So if I want to train with this token, so what's this token, given all the tokens to the back, I can only only do so by forward propagating the signal, and then back propagating the loss through the individual to the individual functions. So I have to forward propagate and then propagate back in order to get the loss. And that means I can only train with one token at a time. In the same time, if I do this in a transformer, I have a attention mechanism on top. So everything can attend to everything else. Notably, no, that's not correct. If I have a GPT style transformer, everything can attend to the tokens in the back. So you know that causal mask, and that causal mask causes causes a property where I can train with all the tokens at once, I can train with this token, because due to the causal mask, it can only see backwards. I can train with this token because due to the causal mask, it can only see backwards. So I can essentially use that then every single token becomes a training example. And yeah, so that's training parallelism. If we look at a equation, a x plus b y plus c z equals something funny, funny face. Uh, little triangle. No, let's make this into a little kitty cat. So little kitty cat. That's a horrible cat. <laughs> okay. Um, if we look at this equation, this is a completely linear equation in its components, right? So what we're trying to explore is how can we make this into a recurrent network? And how can we make this into a parallel network? So how can we compute this in a recurrent fashion, but also in a parallel fashion, and you'll see that what essentially RetNet does does this by making everything linear uh, inside of that layer, we can do it recurrently or in parallel. So how do we do this? How do we compute little kitty cat recurrently? Well, we compute AX 
we store it into a buffer, let's call that buffer gamma. Then we compute by, we add gamma, and we store that into the buffer. And then we compute zz, we add the previous buffer, and we store that into a buffer, at which point that buffer is going to equal what we want. Okay, so this is a recurrent computation, reusing this buffer right here, storing things in the buffer, step by step accumulating over time. So a recurrent neural network just step by step accumulates. If you look at how usually how this looks in as an equation in a well, if we look at like, like a true recurrent neural network, we obviously have nonlinearities in between. So it would be something like, I don't know if ax and then some nonlinearity, and then plus by and then some nonlinearity, and so on, right? This unless I have some knowledge about this nonlinearity right here that allows me to do some tricks, it necessitates that I compute this thing here first, and then this thing, and then the outer thing. So I have to compute step by step. That's why I can't parallelize recurrent neural networks, because I always need to do the inner computation first before I go to the next time step. By the way, that's the same reason you know, that's the same neural networks in the them, in themselves kind of look like this. So they have layer, 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 and I need to go up the layers before I can back propagate back down. There's no way for me to compute all the layers at the same time, I need the output of the last layer to compute the next layer. A recurrent neural network is nothing else but just that turned on its side, essentially, and not in layers, but in time steps. So I need to go over to time steps, and I need to back propagate. So I can't just train everything at the same time. I mean, I can, but I need to compute the gradients backwards in time. And yeah, I hope it's it's evident what I mean. So let's look at how we can write this equation here in a parallel fashion. So in a parallel fashion, I would just do something like, well, I have a b c as a vector, and I make a dot product with x y, z. And that will be little kitty cat. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with this pen here. You can see that in this manner, in this manner, I just have a, uh, a dot product, everything is computed at the same time. So I do all of these multiplications. And then at the end, I do a sum, and that gives me little kitty cat as at once. Okay, so this is computing it in a parallel fashion. You can see the same equation, once recurrently, once parallel. Now, let's look at fully parallel architectures, such as the transformer, why can't they be written recurrently. So in a recurrent fashion, I have the advantage that I, my memory requirement is only this buffer right here, I just accumulate into the buffer. Whereas here, my memory requirement is essentially holding all the dot products, and then aggregating them together. So why can't a transformer not be written recurrently? Well, that's because it has a, the softmax operation, notably. So if I have a softmax, something like E, A, X, plus E, B, Y, plus E, Z, Z, divided by the normalization factor, like log sum X, yada, 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 I need to have all of these things ready in order to compute, I have to compute each of them, I have to hold them. And then I have to uh, aggregate them together. And this is only over the softmax, obviously, how many terms uh, do I have here, usually I have to compute the attention matrix and the attention matrix of all of these dot products is quadratic. But nonetheless, I, I have because of this nonlinearity because of the softmax and how it aggregates, it's not possible for me to compute this in a recurrent fashion, at least not without a lot of trade offs in other dimension. So the softmax is one of the reasons why transformers can't be written recurrently. So what do these models do? They just leave away the softmax. <laughs> so by leaving away the softmax, they just kind of make everything linear, uh, and make everything able to be written in a recurrent fashion. And more than that, by making it like linear, they are now can claim, well, we're at the same time, we're a recurrent network, and we're a parallel uh, network, we can be written in either way. That's cool and all. 
but you're trading off sort of representation power. And that's the entire question of experimental evaluation. So here they derive retention. So just to say this isn't retention over here, what I've demonstrated, it's just the principle of if you have something that's just linear, you can write it in a recurrent and in a parallel form, right? And that is very advantageous. But the trade off is, of course, it's all linear now. <laughs> and there is no like the, the softmax as a powerful nonlinearity in between falls away. And therefore, you would expect something to change. And so the claim here is of this paper, experimentally, that they show that it doesn't hurt them. In fact, it seems to help them. If that's true, then we would have a architecture that could scale fairly to fairly high degree, at least in inference. So you'd still need to train with the quadratic and so on. Um, yeah, right. So what do they do? They go through a long derivation here, but ultimately retention turns out to be like this. So it turns out to be a query times uh, keys. So query, query, that's derived from x. So from the data, sorry, I'm having a bit of a blackout here. You take your data, you multiply it by a learned matrix to get the queries. Don't worry about this thing right here. Like th this is completely useless. It there's its complex conjugate cancels out as far as I can tell. This is complex eigenvalues, yada, yada, yada. The derivation here goes via like the the eigen the complex eigen decomposition of some matrix. Yeah, it just like just turns out to be a scalar at the end. So queries times keys, outer product as we are used to from standard transformers, multiplied by D, which is the causal mask. The causal mask usually is sort of a triangular matrix that just prevents a token from sort of looking ahead into the future. This is a hack. And this is what allows transformers in GPT style to be trained in parallel. So for every token to become a training example. Um, the D is more than just the causal mask, it also has a time decay, as you can see right here, uh, gamma is a scalar, and that scalar is zero. That's the causal masking aspect. And that scalar decays as you look back further into time. So this is kind of a position encoding, which is directly encoded into the retention mechanism. So the further back in time, a token that you attend to is the more its effect or its signal decays in that causal mask. And they're going to use that later to do something pretty interesting, which is multi scale retention, as they call it. And then they just multiply it by the values. So modulo, modulo the causal mask right here, which also includes the position encodings. This is just queries times keys transposed, right the outer product times values. And you'll notice that crucially, the softmax that would be here is missing uh, from the transformer. So that's, that's essentially the difference. It's, it's transformer attention without the softmax with the time decay uh, working backwards. And here, as I said, you still have that quadratic attention matrix. But given that everything's linear, you can now write this in a recurrent fashion, which they do down here. You can write this in a recurrent fashion. So you can go over your sequence and just accumulate it into a buffer. And, um, and then compute that at least at inference time run without the quadratic memory bottleneck at training time, if you want to train in parallel, you'll still have that bottleneck. Although given that it's linear, you can probably optimize a lot more stuff and trade off a lot more stuff. They also have diagrams right here. So you can see um, these just get multiplied together. Whereas here you have that recurrent state, you scale it by that weighting factor. And then once you have that done, you can multiply multiply keys and values. This operation right here is the one that would not be possible in a transformer, right? Because you would have to combine these apply the softmax nonlinearity, 
over all the sequence and then multiply by the values. But because it's linear, we have the commutativity property, the associativity property, one of the properties that you learn in like second grade <laughs> that allows us to sort of change the order of operations uh, and do this multiplication here first and only at the end uh, multiply by the query. So you can see the hidden state is carried forward without ever having been multiplied by the queries and you only need to multiply by the queries in sort of the step where it happens. And then the next step you multiply by the next queries only having accumulated keys and values, which makes sense, right? Every token uh, produces its queries and then looks at sort of the entire past sequence uh, on the keys, key value multiplication. Again, not possible if we actually had that softmax. So that's, that's that they also have a chunk wise recurrent representation. So chunk wise essentially just means, hey, let's just accumulate into this R buffer, which is a chunk. So this all becomes recur. So they mix the recurrent form, the recurrent form being let's accumulate into a buffer and the parallel form into saying, let's accumulate like the past the distant past into a buffer. And for the current chunk, we do the parallel parallel mode in that they can so this is a trade off between recurrent and parallel. And that allows them to scale to really long sequences because they essentially accumulate into a buffer for very, very past sequences, let's say. This is something that they can now do gated multi scale attention, which I find pretty interesting It's a pretty, it's a easy, I would guess extension, but very interesting, because they have the time decay in the position encodings in the causal mask, they can say, hey, usually you have this multi head attention, right? So in attention, you don't just have uh, queries, keys, even in the regular attention times values, but you kind of split them up. So you produce sort of query one times key one, uh, times value one, sorry, value one, let's just call them. All. So you produce all of these different things, you, you, you produce them, and you split them up. So when you go from your data to your queries, your queries is a big vector, and you're just going to split them up, like into four parts, let's say. And these all go into their separate attention mechanism before being combined at the end, it's called multi head, multi head attention. And it usually helps because the different heads can care about different things. They say, well, if we do have different heads, if we do have different computations, can we make them different? So can't we apply a different gamma, sorry, a different time decay factor to gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. So the causal mask we apply, but the decay of values, so it's not ones and zeros, it's actually gamma to some factor and zeros. And that gamma can change from head to head. So we can already pre specify that one head looks more or is more attentive to very recent tokens, and other heads may be more lenient and maybe more uh, looking at the whole sequence. So the retention network is just stacked layers of multi scale retention and feed forward networks, token wise feed forward networks, each time adding a residual connection right here, and layer norm in between. So this is just like a transformer, essentially, they just replace multi head attention by multi scale retention, and retention, again, very similar to attention, except leaving away that softmax and adding the time decay into the causal mask, at least as far as I can see. Here they have architectural comparisons uh, compared to the transformer, which does have training parallelization, the retention also has that um, compared to the transformer, which has O of n inference cost. So memory goes up with inference. Uh, the Res the retention does not uh, have that. No, sorry, that's just inference cost how much it costs me uh, to run inference on an additional token with the transformer, 
you would have to cache your keys and, and values. So there are these KV caches that are now popular in transformer inference framework, but you have to essentially hold all of those things in memory as you do inference. So this is not about the quadratic memory complexity right here, uh, which is its separate separate column here, as you can see, uh, retnet has O of n, while uh, transformer has O of n squared. In any case, you have to hold all of the kv values in the transformer as your sequence goes longer. Whereas in retnet, you can simply accumulate into a buffer, and then just keep that around for the next token. So that's because it's being be able to written in this recurrent fashion. Performance here, check mark, check mark, and here again, check mark, check mark. Um, that's again an experimental claim. Notably the comparison to RWKV, which has all of the same properties. Well, they say it's not as performant, but does not have training parallelization. In the text, they say that it runs recurrently for training and for inference. Now, I recall RWKV also has a parallel formulation because exactly the same thing. Uh, it is being able to be written in parallel in and in a recurrent fashion. Now maybe they just don't do it. Sorry, my setup here keeps spazzing out. So I'm just gonna just gonna finish very quickly uh, before it spazzes out again. RetNet scales better experimentally. So this is language model validation perplexity. This isn't some contrived task, which makes me feel like these val these experiments are okay valid, although the number of tokens here is not, you know, llama style or two trillion tokens or whatnot. And the model sizes, they are sizable, but they're not the biggest sizes we have so far. So it's, it's interesting to see whether this will keep scaling with model size and also with token size. Very, very interesting. But the first experiments look promising. But I I just like I feel we're gonna find out that these numbers right here where in all of these tasks, uh, retnet is better tra than transformer, there's going to be some sort of recognition of where this type of model is good, and where it's maybe not as good. Because so far from these experiments, it looks like boom, everything's absolutely fantastic. And I suspect because they make everything linear, uh, not everything is going to be absolutely fantastic. If it is, it would be fantastic, right? If it is, we would have a scalable architecture that would cost very little to run inference on that we could do a lot of optimization tricks because everything is linear. And that even performs better. But I think that's a bit out out. Uh, as I said, the jury's yet out. Um, I just wanted to discuss a little bit this architecture again by making everything linear, they gain a lot of stuff and I'm greening out again. So that was it for me. Uh, see you around.